SIG fans in the Nutton Fancy Project, you may have given up hope of ever seeing this gun on the Nutton Fancy reviewing table. However, its time has finally come, and you can say hello to the full on tabletop review, Nutton Fancy style, to the awesome and now very collectible SIG P228. Why did it take you three years to knock out a tabletop review? on the 228 Nun Fancy. Fair question and it goes something like this. I really never intended to review the gun. Ever. That's because in 2008 one of the very first service pistols that I reviewed and highly recommended to the world nothing's changed in that by the way is its big brother the SIG P226 Warrior Excellence Pistol. There's a five-parter out there. It's been there since 2008 talking about all the history, considerations, blah 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 on the 226. I figured that that series of videos had enough detail to perhaps answer any fans of the 228. However, <clears throat> I was wrong. That's because throughout the years, and the last three years specifically, I've received numerous requests uh, to review the 228 all by itself. Even though people love the 226, please review the 228. Another hesitation I had is the gun is not readily available. Ceased manufacturing, I think, uh, for civilian sales, 2005, SIG Arms. And I was debating, do I review a gun that's not readily available? I create demand out there where guys cannot go get the gun. I still wrestle with that issue, and I don't know what the answer is. I'm going to go ahead and throw this review out here, but I can guarantee you, if you are a SIG fan after watching this review, you, were, you are going to want a 228 for your collection, for shooting to hold, to enjoy, to caress, to fondle. Who wouldn't? It's one of the coolest SIGs ever produced. And yes, this is a West German SIG P228. And yes, it is mine. I've shown a couple 228s through the years on the in the project. I haven't tabletopped it yet. Uh, let me tell you how I got this one. It's kind of interesting. How about this? Shipped directly to my door as an officer in the United States military. Uh-huh. How cool is that? And I bought it at discount price from my friends at Gil Hebert Guns. Love these guys. I've been ordering from them since the early 1990s. Gil Hebert was a competitive shooter, and a lot of what he sells in the catalog is tailored to competitive shooting sports. And once upon a time, he had a big section of SIGs in the catalog. As a young first lieutenant in the United States Air Force, uh, flying my MWS, that is Major Weapon System Aircraft, I was like, hey man, check this out. I read the interior, it says, yeah, we have a program that if you're a federal military officer, you get a signed affidavit by your commanding officer. It's duty related, and it was for the guns I was carrying back then, very directly related. I was like, cool, we'll ship it right to you. I was like, styling, man. Send it off, got all the forms filled out according to the law that was in place at that time. Had my SIG P228, sadly they don't carry them anymore, bummer, shipped right to my door. Yeah, I had to sign for it. How cool is that though? Good deal on a 228, shipped right to me, and you can thank President Clinton for getting rid of that law. It's been gone for quite some time. Now you have to have a signed letterhead as a law enforcement, off law enforcement officer, and it has to be used directly in your duty, line of duty. Bummer, man. But that's how this 228 came into being. I'm never going to get rid of it. It is special to me for that reason and also the reasons I'm going to talk about in talking points. I want this to be a single parter. Well, let's get going. Philosophy of use. How about combat sidearm? Same thing I said about the 226, right? That it is a gun that I would wear in, you know, a drop down holster as you often see me do, perhaps in a chest rig. I know some guys don't like that method. I absolutely love it because it gets gets the gun out of the way of my tactical carbine that's draped to my side banging along to my right side but it is a you know a dedicated holster pistol is what I'm saying refer to my video compacted ain't in terms of using this gun or ones like it in the role of concealed carry I generally don't think they're that easy to carry in the concealed role. Once upon a time, like I said in that video in the 1990s, there were a bunch of gun riders and a bunch of group groupthink out there trying to convince us these guns were very compact and easy to carry. And even back then in the 1990s, I was like, well, 
it's really not that much smaller than this gun. Point, point 0.6 inches shorter between the 228 and the 226. Very similar, right? Mm hmm. So the main thing you want to look at in a concealed roll is thickness and weight, and it is a chunky pistol. Not super easy to carry. Yes, I know. There's guys that have done it and are still doing it. They may even roll in in the comments. Uh, I say it is a combat sidearm. WROL, law, enfor law enforcement officer, primary handgun. It would serve perfectly in that role. Uh, also in the home defense role, you bet. Although these days I highly recommend you get a SIG with a light rail on it in that role so you can target identify. Here comes the SIG 226 and 40. Milled stainless uh, slide. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, so I like a light rail on mine. Yes, you can have a separate flashlight, but I think that's an inferior system. Uh, I think philosophy of use now as of 2011 in the years to come for the SIG 228 uh, is a collectible. More and more of these guns are becoming rarer, especially in this condition. Check it, how I've taken care of this gun. It is not a primary shooter. I have sailed some rounds out of it, I admit. Hundreds, uh, but I have really throttled back on how much I use this gun because I want to take care of it. Because for me, the Nut and Fancy family, it is a collectible. It harkens back to the age when SIG quality was just unquestioned. You know, since, uh, I don't know, whatever year you want to pick, there have been, from my understanding, and I apologize if I'm wrong, some ups and downs for SIG quality. At least maybe Exeter, New Hampshire made SIGs. I think mostly ups, but there's been a few baubles. When you had a gun like this, roll marked in West Germany, uh, there were no such problems, and you can say that about this gun. I've never seen this gun jam, jumping down to that talking point, ever with, uh, you know, hollow points, FMJs, you name it. They just rock and roll. I'm sure if you look, you know, long and hard enough, you'll find someone that has had a problem with their 228. Very rare, though. That, that makes it collectible right there. That West German roll mark on the slide, that it's out of production, collectible. There's your philosophy of use. Size and weight. Again, compact it ain't. It's not light either. What, 30 ounces? Two ounces lighter than the 226. Make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, that's right, 30 ounces. That's not a super light gun. These days, you can easily beat that. You know, you can get a gun that is, heck, 24 ounces. Reference the Glocks. And no, like the Warrior series of videos, I'm not going to go back and forth between the Glock and the SIG. And I love both equally. I really do. I just love them. I will say this too. This can interesting aside. Since 2008, I tell you guys I'm always learning and progressing, right? Um, my world is not all Glock and SIG anymore. I will tell you that the Springfield XDs, XDMs, is Smith & Wesson MMP series, the FN, uh, FNPs, I haven't really had a lot of experience with the FNXs, the CZs, that's SPL1 Phantom, PO7 Duties, I mean all these guns rise to the level of, I would say, reliability, accuracy, and deadliness of a SIG. We're not back in 1985 anymore, we're not back in 1994 anymore, but that being said, I still say that the SIG holds a very special place in my heart. <laughs> Better said, my inventory. Uh, but the size and weight dudes can easy, easily be beat by a number of competing designs that will cost less money. And if you're, again, going back to philosophy use, you want a concealed carry gun, this is not your best choice. Go with something truly subcompact, maybe along the lines of my very much beloved kel PF9. Shown to you many times before, thousands of rounds shot through the PF9s in the Nut Fancy Project. I mean, you can tell, this is just a representative of the line. I mean, you could be a car PM40, PM9, Walther PPS, Ruger LC9. They're all very compact and slim. Check it. I mean, that's the difference. But there's something more than that. I mean, guys who are in uh, gals that love the P228 aren't really looking at that. They're looking at the big picture of the gun. Um, I will say this, though. Like I said in the 226 video, the gun seems lighter than it really is. And you talk about controllability uh, when you're firing it and the ergonomics of the gun, the weight is a good thing. Uh, I've always, I gotta be honest, kind of given a buy to the SIGs when it comes to the weight issue. I have, 
because I just love them so much. They shoot so well. They make mediocre shooters seem much better than they are. And it's very easy to love a gun that you can shoot well with. Enter the six hours, at least for me. And apparently, at least for a lot of other shooters that I've shared the range with, either out in the desert, in duty qualifications, in military competitions, yes, the SIGs just rock. They rock. By the way, in service with a lot of militaries, at least it has been, and still trucking along as the M11, the SIG 228. Okay, Canadian military police use it, U.S. Air Force, OSI. My buddies in that organization love their M11s. Uh, select U.S. Air Force pilots have flown with M11s forever. Uh, Coast Guard use them. U.S. Army, what is it, CID office, New Jersey State Police, Secret Service, all types of protective details, all types of foreign militaries have used and continue to use and love the SIG P228, despite it not being the most light gun out there. I think the size is decent. I, uh, it, when we talk about ergonomics, though, there is a disadvantage to the slide length, and that is sight radius. I do prefer a longer sight radius on a combat service pistol, just like air. You lose a little bit of that with a 228, and in my own shooting between the two types, I do tend to shoot a little bit better with a full size 226s. And that's just me, my eyes, how I, you know, perceive the. The sights, I don't know, but there you have it. Uh, on to firepower. I probably forgot some stuff in size and weight. Whatever. Firepower, again, uh, in this day and age, I got the 226 in front of you, can be beat. 13 rounds uh, plus one in the chamber is what a stock SIG 228 magazine will get you. Uh, our friends at Metgar, which I've been promoting and advocating ever since I started the Nut and Fancy Project, in fact, in the 226 series of vids, I talked at length about they make a 15 round magazine for the 228. Okay, and here it is. And again, the Metgar magazines are just superb. They're OEM for a lot of pistols, 15 rounds. So now we're at 16 rounds for a relatively compact 9mm. It will fit the 20 round mags that I showed you in the 226 vid. Those are factory SIG magazines. I'm talking, I was trying to find them, I couldn't. And then the Pro Mags I've used for years have been very good actually, although the fit and finish, not impressive. Talked about that in the video too. Here's a 226 mag. It will fit. Another benefit is all the 226 mags will rock and roll in the 228. And I've never found the need for a grip sleeve on the magazine. A gapper is what I call them. Like you saw with the Glocks, apparently the Glocks, you probably ought to run one of those so you don't have feed issues. I've never seen that. Uh, in all the shooting I've done with the 228, with extended magazines, i.e. ones that hang out the butt a little bit, even with the 20s, never seen a jam. They work great. So firepower is adequate. Uh, maybe not like super impressive, but remember, this is not a full-size pistol. It's a little bit shorter. Accuracy. Excellent. Gets funner from here on out. I'm going to roll in some of my older targets of the SIG P228. In this one, I shot 14 May 1994 in Minot, North Dakota with cheap reloads. This is 18 yards, windy, and what I say, somewhat shaky. That was with my new 228. I can't even tell you how excited I was to get this gun back then. I cannot even tell you. I was so stoked. Loved it. And I wasn't super impressed with this group. Let's see. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, but again, that was I actually was sitting down in the grass when I shot it. It got better, though, as I got more experience with it, learned about it, uh, tightened it up. Here's one, Spokane Rifle Club. That's where I did my a lot of my PF9 shooting way back when, when I reviewed that gun. I think that was in 2008, too. Uh, SIG 228, 12 rounds, 7 yards standing, 124 grain, Norinco reloads. Oh, yeah. It's only 7 yards, but I've seen a lot of other guns that can't shoot that well. Uh, this one's not too impressive. Sorry, I roll everything in. I don't try to appear anything I'm not. Group all over the place. 25 yards from sandbags. And this is kind of getting to what I said about the sight radius for me in the 228. Not super, uh, you know, impressive group, but I can do better with a 226. I'll roll a couple of those in there too. Here's one, 1994. Yeah, I was just having a great time with my 228 one and one eighth inch group set for a flyer 124 grain star fires 25 yards from sandbags 
that's a pretty smoking group, don't you think? Uh, I'd be hard pressed to replicate that now. Again, I don't think I'm a great 25 yard bench shooter. Between the 226 and 228, you're not going to see a lot of difference in accuracy. In fact, like American Rifleman says in their dope bag reviews, which by the way I think are excellent, love American Rifleman, NRA publication, they often find that the more compact versions of the full size shoot more accurately. A lot of guys watching the video are nodding their head going, yep, yeah, that's right, because, I don't know, the shorter barrel's stiffer, there's less harmonic vibration, they just have found that, and I think, I didn't go and look it up, I think the 228 versus the 226 for them was that way. It shot more accurately, but, um, dude, can you fault the 226 in accuracy? I don't think so. There's a, what was what that, 15 yards, and that was Blazer 115 grain. 1990 I shot that group. I showed you that on the original videos, I think. I say these targets are fun to reference. Good, uh, there's another one. That's what your SIG 228 can do, just like that. And then here's one, Bug at Nuster and I. Check this out, this goes way back, man. This is him and I just trading off with a 226 at seven yards, just having a little smack contest going on there. Good groups, couple flyers here and there. That's me rapid firing. Uh, the, I show you the 226. This is our 226 because it's the same, same accuracy. The accuracy is what I'm trying to say is outstanding. It's as good as you can fire the gun. Okay, and we'll get into ergonomics now, and we'll talk about the trigger. One reason that the accuracy is so excellent is because these West German Sig 228 out of box just have a superlative trigger. Safety check gun, of course. Okay, double action is long and heavy, about 10 pounds. And then the single action transitions to exactly 4.4 pounds. I have not done a trigger job on this, nor do I ever intend on doing, I can't speak, never intend on doing a trigger job on the 228. It's as good as it needs to be for me to connect. Okay, the ergonomics uh, trigger wise are just excellent, and it makes shooting the gun. I don't know, easy, at least for a somewhat experienced pistolero. Now, again, we could talk about the transition from double action pull to single action and how that is a training issue, and yes, it is. As I've always said with the SIGs, you better be careful when you're in single action because that is a lighter pull than you think. If you're under stress, get your, well, always, if you're not on target, do that. Get your finger off the trigger. Better yet, drop the hammer. Go back in the you know, double action mode because I've seen guys cook off rounds with SIGs when they did not want to cook off rounds. Okay? It is very lightweight and it's fast firing too. Talk about rate of fire on the SIGs. That was one of the first videos I ever came out with showing the rate of fire on the 226. 228 is the same way. Like a freaking machine gun when you get practice. Amazing. I've always loved the controls on the SIGs. The traditional classic SIGs like this. The hammer drop to me is absolutely intuitive. It's placed exactly where it should be, right in the front. One of the criticisms I had on kind of a copycat, the FN, FNP, is that the drop is back here. So my grip is here, and to transition to drop, I have to come back there. Not so with the SIGs. It's positioned right where God intended it to be. Right there, baby. Man, is it fast. Uh, and guys who have not trained with a SIG system, you know, don't knock it until you've shot, you know, I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of rounds with it, which, you know, most SIG guys watching this video probably have. It becomes second nature. Just like I said in the 226 video. Bam, 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 bam. You don't even think about it. You go down, decock. Finger out of the trigger guard. You're ready for next engagement. Piece of cake. Magazine release is excellent. It's angled just so. It raises just so from the grips, which by the way are stippled in, in my my experience, absolute perfection. The SIG 228 grips, and actually this 226, the newer version, wears ones just like it. These are my favorite SIG grips. They have some beautiful wood special edition ones that have come out, but as far as traction, ergonomics go, dude, seriously, these rock. Love them. Love the SIG 226 grips. The trigger is excellent. You can fit it with a short trigger, they're called, which reduces the reach if you have very small hands. Uh, yes, SIG has come out with reduced grip, you know, framed guns, the 226 E-Series, something like that. Uh, I've always found these classic hand grips to be just perfect. The angle is perfect. It fits my hand perfect, and I think it fits most people's hands perfectly. You know, I think if you have really small hands, then the 228 
maybe maybe not uh, may not be your best choice. I wished it kind of had a squared trigger guard. Yes, I know they came out with a railed version of 228 a few years back as kind of a mix mash of parts. I don't think it went over real big. I think they put a Exeter produced lower frame from a 229 with a roll, uh, you know, a stamp slide on it, and called it a 228R. Um, I don't. I, I get the vibe. I went around, and clicked around the internet. I get the vibe that a lot of people just don't dig that one so much. They dig this one, the classic 228 West German production. And while we're at it, let's talk about that slide. The 229, which I also think is an outstanding gun, and actually this review could serve a lot. Um, I don't know how to say it. It could serve as a 229 review because the guns are very similar. The difference is about two, in, two ounces uh, more heavy, the 229. And that's because that gun was going to be chambered not just for the 9mm, but for the 40 Smith & Wesson 357 SIG. And if they were to stick with this um, ha mandrel hammered slide, and basically it's made of heavy gauge mill finished sheet metal that's welded to perfection. You cannot detect any weld marks on a 228. You cannot. It's just It looks like one machine piece of metal. The problem with going with that to the other calibers is slide velocity. Too much slide velocity. So they'd have to put in a very strong recoil spring in the 229 had they gone with this slide construction and it just didn't make sense. You know CNC milling had become more predominant accurate so that SIG just said hey we're just going to go with a milled stainless steel slide just like this 226 has. This is a milled stainless steel slide and I think it's excellent. Love the milled stainless steel slide. There are, there are a couple disadvantages. Well I've already mentioned one that is the weight. It is heavier than this version. Another one is notice the pinning of the breech block. It's like permanently pinned not user serviceable as opposed to the 228 that has a roll pin. Standard variety. That means you go swimming with your 228 just like the Navy SEALs probably do. And yes, for my information, they also use the M11 228. You can take it completely apart, rinse it, service that firing pin area, breech block, clean it out. Have fun doing that with this version. Everything's doable. It's just a matter to the length and depths you're willing to go. Okay, there's a little something something on the slides in. 228, I've never actually been, um, I never felt handicapped by... Um, you know, the heavy gauge sheet metal slides, whatever you want to call it, like the 228 has. I just haven't. The only disadvantage I would say is probably rust resistance, which is not awesome. I think I mentioned that in a 226 review. You can rust these. you got to take care of them. Wipe them down with your favorite choice of lubricant. I probably would not coat a 228 ever, ever. They're too collectible. They're too special. I wouldn't Duracoat it. I wouldn't Cerakot it. I'd just take care of it. In fact, I'd probably just leave it in my safe and <laughs> fondle it. There's so many other guns that are more, you know, uh, affordable to shoot and perform just as well, honestly. Ergonomics, sights. I've always loved SIG sights. Said that a lot. I have not replaced these, never intend to. Single dot bar works great. There's a fair amount of daylight there that you can get on target quicker. Easy to replace if you didn't like them. I think you may have yeah, caught out. a glimpse of these. True Glow TFOs, Tritium Fiber Optics. These are one of my favorite sites all around. I love the presentation of them. Bright green Tritium, uh, not Tritium, but Fiber Optic, and then glowing green at night. Easy to install on a SIG. Yes, you could put them on a 228 if you really wanted to. The overall feel. Um, I guess you got to shoot the gun to really appreciate it. And I would say this about any of the classic SIGs. To shoot it is to love it. It just... Again, it gets it's soft recoiling, especially in 9mm. Even in 40, I've done thousands of rounds of shooting in 40 at this point. Actually, this is a 9 slide. Sorry if I told you wrong. I have a 40 run around here somewhere. But in, even in 40, it's very controllable. It's a pussycat. Quick firing, great ergonomics. It just endears itself to gun guys. It does me. I love the ergonomics on a SIG. And I think a lot of manufacturers throughout the years are still playing catch up to the SIG and some have done quite a good job and I've covered it on tabletop. Field strip and maintenance. Standard setting bro. Standard setting. Let me get my little take down. I rarely will take this down, uh, gun down on camera but it's so quick with a SIG right? Safety check, safe direction, lock the slide back, 
We rotate the takedown lever. I'm going to do this so I don't knock the tripod. Once that's done, voila. SIG is done. I got some TWE, what is it, TWB25 lubricant on the slide there, on the frame. Then if you want, you just pop your recoil spring out, clean the gun. I just cleaned this today. Done. Simple. There's that breech block that you can take out. We talked about that. SIG is, is, by the way, a very safe handgun. And one thing I've always loved about SIGs is they don't have, putting it back together, any additional safeties. You've got a slide lock, you've got the hammer drop, and that's all you need. I've always said that in my reviews. I, you know, Some guns, i got to be honest, do need a safety. Like a 1911 variation, obviously you're going to need a safety. But one with an initial long, heavy, double action trigger pull, why do you need a safety, dude? You don't. It's just added complication. Yeah, but what if someone grabs your gun and they take it out of your holster? Well, I'd say you've got other issues. And number one issue is gun retention. All kinds of techniques you can you know, practice with that. And you can get a retention holster if that's a concern. Field strip and maintenance is cake on a SIG. And yes, lots of other guns copy it and they get it right as well. I don't know, just because it's hand handy. CZ75 PO7 duty. Also outstanding. Okay, lighter than the 228, by the way. There's your width comparison between the two guns. This is a 40, by the way, not a 9. Okay, but it, it breaks down the same way. Simple. There's lots of other guns. XD series, XDM by Springfield. Thank goodness, too, because it just works. Accessories and versatility. The cool thing about the 228 and the 226 for that matter is they predominated and were extremely successful in an era that had fewer, how do I say, designs competing in the accessories market. In other words, the SIG pistols became so entrenched in law enforcement and in some circles military that the accessories manufacturers jumped on the bandwagon. They said, man, this gun rocks. Um, we need we can be profitable making holsters, sights, grips, other accessories for SIGs. And this started back in the 1980s, and it still continues to this day. If you are the proud owner of, hopefully, a West German SIG 228, the good news is you have all kinds of accessory options. The magazines, like I said, for the 226 will fit your gun. All kinds, well, I wouldn't say all kinds, but there are grips op grip options out there. Tons of holster options, and yes, ones that fit the 226 generally will fit the 228 as well. Here's a Phobos. Snap, dura coated. You know, it just, I got to tell you this too, it just kind of doesn't sit well with me, me having just done that, because I just put some more wear on my 228. <laughs> oh, nothing fancy, don't be such a pansy. Dude, this is a collectible. Remember, that my POU for this is a collectible gun. I want to retain value. I want it to be cool. The cleaner and more pristine it is, I finally came to the conclusion, the cooler it is. Okay, I've got all kinds of other guns I can send rounds downrange. If you even knew how many I have access to, it would blow your mind. Don't need to use my 228. Let's take care of it, make it special. And yes, accessories all over the map. You can find any holsters you want for it. You'll still see the P228 listed in a lot of it, uh, the holster manufacturers' websites and their literature. Uh, and then we go into versatility. This is kind of philosophy of use. I covered most of it. You know, combat sidearm, home defense, vehicle gun, forgot to mention that one. Duty sidearm, all of the above could be. I will tell you this, though, and I've got to be honest with you guys. I always am. I don't pretend to be anything I'm not. I don't say anything I don't really believe either is this is a gun size that I would rarely use. Most often, just like I said, I don't know if I said or not, in compact it ain't, I'm going to go full size pistol or I'm going to go subcompact. Not between the two. Because if I'm going with a dedicated holster system, drops to my side, maybe it's a shoulder holster, chest carry, drop down, whatevs, this is it. I want full length sight radius. I want full length barrel for maximum velocity. I do want a little extra weight to help tame the shots, get me back on target quicker. Remember there is such a thing as good weight. Okay, if I'm in a WROL situation, <laughs> this gun is coming along. This is my choice right here. If I'm in a war situation, soldier, you bet it's going to be a full size service pistol, a SIG, a Glock, a CZ, Smith, XD, something that can rock and roll. 
Uh, still a backup arm, primary fighting arm would be a tactical carbine, maybe shotgun depending on what's going on. If I'm in civilian concealed carry, it's going to be a subcompact like this, Caltech PF9, any number of the compact you know, weapons that are out there. Okay, so the 228 kind of falls between, and so some of them may, and actually it'd be an honest question, well, why keep the 228? Well, I'll tell you, and I've told you all along, it gets to second type of cool. Um, it can fill the role of the 226. Every bit is good. Maybe it's down a few rounds. We've talked about that, a couple rounds, but again, we're talking 16 rounds in a 228 with today's Metgar magazines. Slap a 20 in there. But it's just cool. And it may be in certain very select POUs that shorter barrel length would be an advantage. It's hard for me to identify what those would be, but to some, they would value. If you have a clean 228 like this one, it's going to continue to go up in value, is my guess. I'm just saying, it is. If you don't shoot it, you take care of it, it's, I think the prices are going to go up. Um, because they're harder to find. Most 228s out there are probably heavily used, they're abused, they're worn, and yet they're still great shooters. If on the secondary market you can find one and you dig the things I'm telling you, score it, man. You'll love it. Yes, again, not the lightest, not the highest firepower, but deadly accurate, deadly reliable. I mean, you talk about reliable, going down the track record, durability and reliability, amazing. You know, does it rise to the level of Glock, 350,000 rounds buried in mud, never lubricated, and it'll always shoot, 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 never break? I don't know. Probably not. I'll tell you this, though. I ain't seen many SIG problems in my shooting. The only ones I've seen have been magazine-related. Yep. Not so much. Love the SIG 228. And for value, I think it's worth every penny. I don't know. What can you score a 228 for these days? I don't know. I don't even know where to send you to find them. They're so... Guys who have them, especially after they watch this video, are not going to sell them. Pull, don't jerk that I think you'd be dumb to sell them. On Hang on to it forever. How would you like to be a kid and your dad hands you down a West German 228 as a gift? Here you go, son. I love you. There's your 228. Thanks, Dad. Dude. Liable, durable, handsome. That's a cool-looking gun. I talked about in the 226 series how it's a favorite Hollywood gun. 226 and the 228. Wasn't... You know what, X Files, weren't they running around with 228s back in that TV show? I think so. Track record. Already talked about it. Still serving in the militaries, some PDs, law enforcement um, arenas, the P228. Not available to civilians anymore. I think uh, ceased doing that around 2005. It could be off on the time frame. I apologize. Uh, way cool gun, though. You may see it every so often coming out of its hiding place to send some rounds here in the Nut and Fancy Project. But honestly, like I said, it's on limitation and preservation. I remember one time, this is, uh, I've shown lots of 226s. This one's mine. I showed this one to a gun shop owner, and right there and then, he's like, I'll buy that from you right here. And I think he threw down a price of like $750 for my, my SIG. By, by the way, also West German stamped. I was like, no, I don't think so. He's like, come on, man, I'll do it. I love that gun. I love the West German SIGs. And I'm like, sorry, won't do it. And I'm so glad I said no. Same thing goes for this, the 228. Slightly more compact, slightly lighter version of the 226. It is also a warrior pistol. I just love it. This is a nothing fancy review. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and all the support. Out.